I'm in the backyard and I want to show you how to grow dragon fruit, what I think is the cheapest and most simplest way. I've been growing them for about five years. I'm passionate about them. I bloody love dragon fruit. I've tried personally a lot of different ways how to grow them. I've got lots of different varieties and I'll show you what I think is a pretty foolproof method if you want to grow a lot of dragon fruit for home consumption. Pretty much wherever you are in the world, as long as you don't get frost. I propagate all my own cuttings now, which means whenever I want cuttings, I just cut them off existing, established, mature dragon fruit vines. This one here is reaching for the sky. Doesn't look like it's gonna hang over this timber. Cut it at the base. And then remember, where's the bottom and where's the growing tip? Because if you plant that upside down, it'll be a failed attempt. You need to make sure that you plant it bottom into the potting mix. So there's pretty much a perfect cutting. So I've got a free, a free timber post here. Generally what you could do is the cheapest but more maintenance. One point I will make is that everything that we're doing here um, in the yard, yard, slightly bigger than a yard, big yard. <laughs> everything that we're doing, we're keeping in mind how much we need to maintain it, all right? Does it need to be like fertilized a lot? Is it, do you need to constantly put shade on it? Um, a grub's gonna constantly be eating it. How much do you need to uh, water it, mow around it. By putting them in the pots, we're really eliminating having to like mow or hand weed around the base of them. And also any water or fertilizer we give them goes directly to the roots. But you could put them in a pot, which is what I've done, or you can just plant them straight, straight into the ground. When you do plant them though, only plant it about one to two inches deep, which generally means you're gonna have to tie that up as well. So it doesn't fall out of the ground. You'll notice on all of mine, especially when they're getting established, um, I'll always have a bit of banana twine or some string that just holds them, holds them up and directs them in the way that you want them to grow. Because if you plant them too deep and you get a lot of rain and you don't have well draining soil, quite often that can get um, fungus or just completely rot away. It all goes yellow and will be a fail. Just remember the dragon fruit are a cactus and they don't like a lot of water but they do need water. I don't have mine irrigated, but I live in a really wet part of Australia. Ideally though, I'd have little drip sprinklers that can just feed out small amounts to the root base and then have a fertigation system where I can put um, yeah, liquid fertilizer through that irrigation system. So that's the goal, I'll set that up in time, but at the moment can't really justify it. And this is going fine. Like I'm getting enough food off these dragon fruit that I pretty much have fresh dragon fruit all year round. But if I really wanted to optimize how many I was growing, if I was doing it commercially, I'd have drip fertigation. You'll see behind me an example of how I've like grown dragon fruit up an already existing structure. So this was a, a cattle fence to keep cows away from the house and horses away from the house. And because there's not a lot, there's a lot of nice hardwood timber here that nothing was growing up. So I thought, you could grow passion fruits up there or different types of beans, probably, you know, a lot of other things you could trellis, but I thought a dragon fruit on each freestanding hardwood post would be a, a good use of the space. So I've got 20 litre pots at the bottom with well draining potting mix. Don't skimp on the potting mix. That's my, my hot tip. Otherwise, if you do, if you just go get it from your, your backyard or the, the rainforest or somewhere in the scrub, it's going to have a lot of different seed and you're just constantly pulling weeds out. So. Yeah, take the time to get some really good potting mix. Um, it helps control the vigor as well a little bit because the roots aren't going all the way through the ground. And yeah, this this is this to me is just a really easy and cheap way to be able to set it up. After you plant your dragon fruit, you're gonna be waiting probably around 16 months, depending on the initial size of that cutting, for all of your new growth to mature and then be able to push out buds, turn into flowers, pollinate, and then set some fruit. This is a purple dragon fruit. This is one of my favorites. We're coming to the end of the season and this is the, the last one that I got. It's the last purple dragon fruit. So I thought I'd, I'd cut it, have it for breakfast and share it with you. It's a pretty spectacular piece of fruit. There's a lot more to tell, to share, to explore, to learn about the humble yet mighty dragon fruit. How we got that? That's exquisite, eh? Uh, but I thought this would be a, a great intro video just to to show you what we're doing with our dragon fruit, how they're looking. Look at the skin, look at that. Purple and pink. Yeah, how they're looking and hopefully get a few more people growing dragon fruit. The dragon fruit that you get from a store, if it's been imported and if it's traveled for weeks in cold refrigeration, it'll have close to no taste. Uh, this here is maximum taste. So good. 
but honestly like you could grow this on a balcony like just literally if you've got sunlight like you need you need full sunlight like they won't go that well in shade dragon fruit trigger is the lengthening of days same to like same as marijuana same as a weed plant so lengthening of days is going to induce budding also now that we're coming to the, the end of summer i'm going to be doing a prune on all of these dragon fruits and i'll have a lot of mature cuttings um, if growing your own and getting a good variety a, a purple pink super vigorous high yielding self-pollinating dragon fruit is something that you're wanting let me know in the comments and i can try line up whatever the smoothest most reliable way is to to sell a few to you guys if that's something you're interested in wow um if you want to stick around i'm just going to go over to the cafe if you haven't seen what our cafe looks like the pocket in alarish here in far north queensland australia i'm going to go grab a cup of there and then feed a few of the animals the girls at the cafe just called and said there's a, a calf out we've got calves <laughs> calves dropping at the moment they said there's a yeah, calf like walking around the shed at the cafe somehow gotten maybe under the fence or something because a few of them are only a couple of days old oh how did you get out so here's the yards quite a lot of the cows have got calves at the moment you my friend how did you, how did you get out here you're right oh little boy little bully calf you're right I'll open this gate. You're right. You're right. Yeah, it should go straight in. That's it. You're right. Straight in there, little mate. Other way. Oh, it's trying to go back to mum. That's it. That's it. Good boy. How did it get out? You happy? <laughs> Mum, you would have been stressing. Hey, you're stressed. So this is Lou. Hey, Lou. She's very tame. These are the partridges. And you, young cock, are looking a bit scruffy. And these are the two turkeys we got, which I don't know where they came from. Someone literally dropped them off. Come on. Come on. You watch, they'll just bully their way in. They throw all their feathers out there as a display of dominance. What are you doing, Patty? What are you doing to the chicken coop? Hey? Will you ever start laying again? This is the chicken Taj Mahal we built for the chooks, which they don't like going in. We've trained them to gobble on demand, which is good. Is the old international tractor with a little slash on the back, two wheel drive. Over here we got another pretty elaborate chicken coop, some Indian runner ducks and a few other chooks. We hand raised these ducks from a few days old so whenever they see a human now, I like to think me but whenever they see a human, they want to come and say hello. Hey, how you doing? Hey, what are we having here? <laughs> hey. Jeez, I need to change that water. Looks like there'd be a crocodile in it. Ow, ow. There's breakfast. We've got two boys and two girls with these Indian runners. Ooh. Also, this is our farm cafe. It's called The Pocket at Alarish. It's on Instagram, it's on Facebook. It's here in North Queensland, about an hour and a half south drive of Cairns, but got the best chives, coffees, gifts, local produce, products, all that sort of stuff. You can come and check out the animals. Um, say good day to the, the team and appreciate you watching the video. See you later.